If you want to see some of the best Apex Legends that exist in the next 30 seconds, watch this. Ball? Ladies and gentlemen, I'm introducing you not only to the channel, welcome back again for another 5 Rules episode, but to one of my favorite episodes that we've been waiting to get to, Fade. That is right, Fade, the movement god. Outside of Asu and outside of a lot of those, like Lyric, who I will be covering, this guy, let me tell you, when I saw this cat, I first was ran across a YouTube video of his, and I was astonished. He has since gone on to get 374,000 subscribers, he's getting over 170 thousand views per video on average he's got 14.3 thousand followers on twitter so go ahead and follow him on twitter and also 270 thousand followers on twitch so the kid is growing he's an unbelievable player and i wanted to not only take this time to look at his gameplay but give you guys five rules on why he's so successful and how you can translate what he does in this game particularly over to your own games let's leave a like on this show some love and also leave a like on this video if you guys want me to get to your favorites whether it's gin burton whether it's lyric whether it's lulu whether it's albert lelly whether it's apex predators uh you guys gotta like this video or dislike it let me know what you guys are into but first let's talk about why this is so important our first rule of today is wraith's kit wraith is a unique legend that can do things with fade's ability that no other legend can do. Every video I've shown you, there's no Gibraltar. There's, you know, no um, Caustic usually being played. And a lot of the reason is that certain kits allow for different styles. Now, Wraith's kit is a specific style that I'm going to show you here as we watch a little bit more and we get more in-depth into these uh, tips that is unique in terms of giving a fade and other players like him an advantage uh, when they get into trouble. And it's particularly because of her Into the Void, which is her ability to go into the Void and not take any damage. She's the only character in Apex Legends that can take zero damage, become completely invulnerable and unshootable in any form for a period of time. She also has voices warn you when danger approaches. So think about as a solo player how valuable it is to have a warning visually or auditorily when someone is looking at you from any distance. It's incredibly valuable. Uh, also, Dimensional Rift is another thing that you won't see much in this game, but it, that can even itself help to allow uh, Wraith players in particular to be successful. Let's go ahead and continue watching this because it gets good. So one of the things you're going to notice Fade does here, and I'm going to bring this in because this is important to watch. There's, I'm actually going to give you two of the rules right now, and I'm going to let this video kind of uh, uh, play so that we can analyze them as they go because they're very, very important to understand what you're going to be watching. Fade has two main principles that allow him and other solo players to be so successful in these 1v3, 4, 5, 6, 7 engagements, and part of it is that they're done in a building. Most of this game is going to take place around buildings. Why are buildings so valuable? Well, they incorporate a lot of the other things that I've mentioned are valuable in terms of making sure you can 1v3 appropriately. You're able to do all of it by just choosing a building versus open land. You get cover, you have backup plans, meaning multiple routes to escape. So a zip line, you've got stairs, you've got the outside of a building. You've got m movements uh, of players also, on the other hand, become more predictable. So you know there's only a few ways they can approach you, and that allows what you'll see Fade here to do to take advantage of that by making his enemies predictable. Remember what rule and what uh, video we had that in? Anyways, also it allows him to not take unnumbered fights, outnumbered fights, and of course 1v1s. The other thing that I want to get into as well is zipline techniques. Most of you guys don't know there are several different zipline techniques, and I'll show you one in a moment, but we got to get to that part in the video. But pay attention. He uses ziplines better than almost any other player in the game. Game, maybe outside of Asu or Dizzy. 
Someone had a shotgun in here. Correct. Nope. Alright, we got a bow uh, sentinel. Tough loadout as well. Bow sentinel. My goodness. Oh! <laughs> oh incredible. Man, this oh, guy is weird. this guy no, is special. More so just miss. What the f <laughs> and this is another example of the, the oh no button. This is why Wraith again is so important. A lot of times you're going to be playing and you will have moments where you have uh, something unexpected happen. And this is why Wraith is really a key to a lot of these play styles. An Octane may not have been able to get out of that with an Octane right there. Uh, especially when you're talking about a building being your ideal location. Sure, an Octane might be able to jump pad or at least start throwing his animation of a jump pad. Jump to the top, maybe, but he'd get followed pretty instantly, and he'd use a stem. He'd be less on health. There's really nowhere to go outside of that. A wraith is able to not only get inside oh, the building, nice. but she's able to react, hit the oh no what button, the, the oh button, basically, and get into another safe space. Break. But this is gonna be good. This this is leading into our zip line technique conversation, which you guys, it's not Where's easy, it? but you will love learning it, and you're it's just a master class right here. Might as well be a master class. Hold this. Did you catch it? Okay. All right. All right. I, I, I want to slow this down so you guys understand what this is. And um, this, what this is, is essentially him using the forward momentum of Zipline. Now, if you go onto a Zipline in Apex Legends, you can essentially look the direction you want, quickly hit it, and then let go of it like you're jumping on and off. And what that will do will fling you in a direction. If you hit the Zipline and you're going sideways, say, like, I want to go out there, I would hit E as a mouse and control player. I'd land on it, but right when I got on it, I'd hit E again in that direction while jumping, and essentially I would be flung forward with a lot of momentum. It's a way to engage a lot of momentum. So what he does here is he actually does that all game long, and that's why I'm bringing it up now because you will see it all game long upwards. And this is one of those things, you could use it to go back and forth, you could use it to gain incredible speed, you can do down, but upwards is what he really does to stay one step ahead and above his opponent. So he's going to hit this battery here. And then the Octane he knows is going down. But the Wraith he's just hit. As you can see. See that right there? He's jumped up. He has basically jumped up as a result of this zip line. Um, the Octane goes down. He has jumped up. And is now looking down. Off of that momentum of the zip line and is able to kind of get back up here. It's a really great moment because it shows right here as well, and I don't like the sound. We're just going to mute the sound while we do this. Again, a great way. He hits the Wraith earlier and is able to go to this zip line and then basically hits his head at first, but that's the technique, and then he's able to do this one more time. He gets up quickly and is now able to finish off that Wraith when she thinks it's impossible for him to have gotten there. These are some of the things that these players incorporate that they don't talk about, that it just looks like they're moving really fast and fancy, uh, but this is based on the momentum that you get from basically jumping on and off quickly of a zip line, and he, he, he will... Oh my god, he manipulates this. He abuses this so well in his gameplay that uh, it's, it's, it's really impossible for people to track him. All right, let's keep watching this. We're going to be able to watch basically the rest of this now. Oh. Really deft touch. Air control to get down to that fourth level. Knows there's nobody above him as well. Sorry, not above him, but on that level. So he gets a, a, a free heal. Little things he's doing really well. Constantly holstering, unholstering his weapon. The last thing that I want to mention is that he uses this zip line as a, a, a bit of an audio cue to tell people that, hey, I'm going on the zip line, but he often fakes it. And that's where zip lines can be tricky because he can use the sound of the zip line to make people think, oh, he's going up or down, but he's really just going to the side of these little parts of this building to stand waiting for people to make a move thinking oh he's going up or down and i can maybe shoot him on the zip line up there and this is kind of what you'll see him do these little inner 
plateaus are where he likes to stand a lot, and most players just have no idea that he's standing there. If you guys just learn to stand here and fight like this in your games, you're going to get three, four, five times the kills that you get in these types of buildings. Notice he's hearing everybody move, but the big aspect of it is that he, he has the ability to go down or up. Woo! Nice shot. That player gave up. That was a, a Twitch streamer as well. He's like, I ain't gonna, I know what I'm fighting. That ain't gonna work. Gets his head bump there. Oh my chaos! There's no way he can get out of this. Oh, I love the audio. Gets an arc star, takes the arc after he just used it, so he's back to the amount of arc stars that he had. For that one. Make sure you show some love to Fade, by the way, guys. In the comments. Leave a like on the video. Also, go follow his Twitch, his, Twitch, his stream, his YouTube. <laughs> Waiting for the Revenant. Please. Send one back, bro. Please. They didn't send any of them back. And there's another great use of the Q just to get to a better spot to take this fight. He knew there were two teams fighting, essentially. You see it again, right? Great shots. Buildings, predictable. These little plateaus. Look at this, right again. The zip line jumps. Nice try for the arc. But again, this look how much control he has just being able to do this. What the <laughs> I love the bow too, Matt. I love the bow. I love that he's doing it with the bow. What's y'all favorite? What's y'all? What's weapon? Weapon you rocking right now? Because I think the bow is actually uniquely good for this situation. To be honest, it may seem odd. Pay close attention to one thing that I think is really important, guys. Uh, heading into this next part of what this video is all about, I, you guys have to understand, he's still in the He's got 10 kills right now. But one of the things that I think is so important, the fourth rule that I want to highlight here, is processing and execution speed. Everything that's happening is happening instantly. He has no idea how many players are coming in, coming out. He's got a rough idea that there's a lot of teams fighting but his level of ammo his level of ability to shield swap his level of ability to loot quickly what's the difference between playing soccer or football in high school versus the premier league the speed at which you pass the ball and take your actions this is what my professional coaches, when I was on my collegiate soccer path, getting drafted to the MLS, talked about, and this is it. It's just the speed of how fast you receive, how fast you pass, how fast you process things. If you guys do the same behaviors over and over again, you will speed up at it, but you need to get your looting at a high enough skill level so you could even come close to these actions in tight situations. One of the best places or best ways I see a player who is not skilled is to look at how fast they loot. That's basically it. And you'll see this man loots. There's there's a Dude, there's a separation of how you loot. Sorry. There's a separation of how you loot at the highest level. Ammo. Oh my god. No, my walking robot, walking robot. <laughs> walking robot, walking robot. Walking bot! Holy sh walking <laughs> turret! Good energy too. I like Femi. He's 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 funny, man. I really do. I enjoy his content. I hope you guys are getting put on game if you haven't watched him. If you are uh, already watched him, I hope you're enjoying this breakdown analysis. I'm sure uh, a lot of people haven't been able to put it into words. You know exactly what these players are doing that's making them so successful in these moments. Oh shit. Hopefully this helps. Been loving reading your guys' comments about this series. Watch this, watch this. Little zip line up. Nice tech there. He does, did you see how fast? Did you catch it? Did you catch that? That was a zip line up and an immediate flick down to see where he's at in order to throw the arc star. No, he's in he's trouble running. 
Come right up. Come right up. There again, the Wraith get out of trouble. Get out of the oh crap button. Bro, what the? These ledges. Nice grenade throw, and he's going to go to the ledge so that it drops down and explodes underneath him. If he would have dropped all the way down, he would have been able to be hit by his own grenade blast. Ooh, good recognition. Things are bad, and oh, crap. Button. Hell no, walking robot. You guys catching it? You cannot do this with Gibraltar. You cannot do this with certain characters. It just doesn't work, and so that's why Wraith, you see Wraith on these kind of alpha predator Apex Legends players because she has a oh crap button and let me extend this fight get back into a situation that allows me to have control or at least know what's happening and then i can re-engage and that is why uh you have you may your problem may just be your legend choice at this point not not all legends are created equal Dump. oh you're lucky there's a guy behind me seems like the teams are getting a little bit better they sniff them out four squads left Oh, that's gonna be a nice shot. Bow check, bow. Finish him off. Landing with the Eva. Only seven shotgun ammo, though. It's been tough for him. He has not found a lot of it. He's used the bow check, bow all game long. Off to the ledge as well. Oh, and really nice thermite burning too. Eva eight comes out as well. He starts slamming him with the pellets. Red Evo, but he's got no shield left. Can he buy it in time? The bow check, bow is gonna finish it off. What a shot! The flick. The R99 is in process, but he's going to keep it going because he doesn't need it. He's processed enough applications to be able to beat him, and nobody has been a suitable applicant yet. And so far, it doesn't look like things will change for Fade. I haven't seen the rest of this gameplay clip, but you know what? I'm giving you some entertainment because he's giving me some as well. Leave a like for the commentary, and there's a Bangalore smoke. 15 kills to his name and only 3,000 damage. That's efficiency. That's not a charge rifle gameplay. And look at that. Oh, and the grenade hits as well. What a slam. Fade. Oh, absolutely faded in the play. And he goes into the void so that he can across, get across oh, this yeah. building without taking any bullets. Gets up, adds a little bit of extra speed, meets the Bangalore, matches her on high. Who will claim the top? It's going to only be one. And who's going to catch the fade? Well, I feel like I already know that answer, and you should by the title of the video. And the streamer we are watching, Sonar Detected, but is it detecting your demise? A question all wise, Bloodhounds ask. Beautiful portal, dimensional rift allows her to block off that door so that if they do approach her, they go back into the zone. That's why, again, Wraith can block off spaces, can get to the spaces that she needs. I can also do it while being unharmed. Now the other two teams are fighting each other. Fade, he's positioned himself to be... Almost a vulture, a scavenger in this type of fight. And you know what? That's number five. What makes oh. he makes the most out of what he has. Weapons, loadout. That's extremely difficult to do. A bow check bow. Ammo. 15 kill game with barely enough shotgun ammo. And he's been able to make it happen. Hit firing or not. Up into the air, you just made yourself a bigger target, buddy. And I know how to octane jump pad as well. Hits a little oh. bit of a top strafe. Realizes oh. he's in trouble. And there's that oh crap button. Look at it. This man knows how to do oh, what he does. And everyone loves watching a master at their craft. This is why if you want to get better in Apex Legends, you need to be watching videos like this. You need to understand how much time and effort and skill it takes to perform these things which feel routine but look insanely out of your league. That's because of the processing speed with which he applies it. The zipline techniques, the building play, of course, focusing on buildings. But even when it gets to the point where he's got to find himself out here in the open. He knows how to navigate these fights. Finding it's cover yet again, like we've talked about in HAL. Being precise? Yeah, I think he's a precise player. Is he clinical? Well, I think there's more clinician. I feel like HAL might be able to find that. And we know HAL is the Terminator. We've already talked about him. But in terms of getting the job done and finding a way in and out of situations, nobody better than the movement god himself, Fade. Uses the door. He knows it's going to get broken, but he buys himself enough time for a shield bat. He's got alternator, but he's going to use a dimensional vo uh, uh, wraith portal as well as into the void. He blocks off one of the doors. And he also keeps himself safe while he does the motion. Now restricting the movement, making their play more.
predictable. He's found the alternator, and he's going through the shield, but he's getting Audio. shot on the backside as well. Audio is the problem, oh, but it looks no like Audio. he takes his own portal back. This was not his intention, but he ends up having the shield swap from the guy he killed earlier still available. 18, 16 kills to his name. Will it be 18? It looks like he's got 17 for sure. Can he finish off the 1v1? Why not? Into the void. The OS button allowing him to have a whole lot of success with that button. You think you're going to out Amy son? Not after everything I just did to get this win. Best game of season 10, man. Best game we might have had in the series on the channel. Leave a like and let me know what you guys think and who you want me to cover next. Thanks, Fade. You are the movement god in my eyes. As always, never give up, never stop gaming. I'll see you all next time.